Let's go ahead and solve this equation. And before I solve this, I want to give you an opportunity to solve this on your own. If you're looking at this, you're like, oh, yeah, I can do this. Well, that's excellent. I would say pause the video. It might take you a good minute or so, uh, maybe a minute or two to solve. But put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the solution uh, to this equation here in just one moment. And then I'm going to walk through the step-by-step -step process to get those answers or answer. I don't want to give you too many hints here. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. So let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. And there you go. This is uh, there's a couple of different ways you could express uh, the solution uh, to um, this problem, but this is a very common way. So x is equal to negative 17 plus or minus square root of 229 over 6. So if you were able to solve this, you would certainly uh, be able to interpret uh, whether you have uh, the right answer or not. But what we're dealing with here is a quadratic equation. There's two solutions. Uh, here, there's uh, the solutions are kind of broken up as negative 17 plus the square root of 229. If I went into my calculator, I figure that out, and then I would divide that by six. That would be one solution. And then the second solution would be negative 17 minus the square root of 229 over six. And of course, that's how you get your two unique solutions. So, anyways, if you got this right, well, that's pretty impressive. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a happy face, an A plus plus, a 150 percent, and multiple. And matter of fact, I'll throw in a couple extra stars because that's pretty awesome. Okay, nice job. It shows me that you know um, how to solve quadratic equations. Okay, this problem, I would say, is a, uh, you know, like a medium level quadratic equation problem. So anyways, nice job. Now, if you didn't get this answer, don't, uh, you know, distress. I'm going to go ahead and show you the exact steps we need to take to get the solution. Let's go ahead and get started on that now. All right, so here is our problem. Now, in its current form right here, um, you really can't really uh, tell what's going on. Anytime in algebra you see things uh, with a number or a value outside of parentheses like this, you want to be thinking about the distributive property. So we want to distribute this 5 to these two in inside terms, and then this y, we're going to do the same thing over here. So that's always our first move if you have parentheses in your uh, equation. So when I do that, I'm going to end up with 5 times 2y is 10y. And then 5 times 1 is 5. y times 3y is 3y squared. And then y times that 7 is 7y. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and um, add like terms. Okay, so what are our like terms? Well, I only have 1y squared, so I'm going to write that up front uh, because you always want to be thinking about uh, writing uh, the terms of your expressions from highest to lowest power. We call that standard form. That's going to be important here. So we have 1y squared, 3y squared. We'll write that first. And then I have a 10y here and a 7y here. So I can combine those, okay? Those are our like terms into 17y. And that leaves me with just uh, this 5 right here. So we'll put that last. So there you go. This is our equation it, uh, written in standard form, and it's clear now that we're dealing with a polynomial to a uh, second degree, okay, a second degree polynomial, meaning that this is a quadratic equation that there is two solutions, okay? So that's kind of the first thing you need to do uh, in order to, uh, you know, solve this problem is to recognize what kind of equation you're dealing with. So you got to have to take these steps, and, and hopefully you recognize this as a quadratic equation. And so now let's go ahead and talk about how do you solve quadratic equations. Well, here's our problem. And when you're thinking about quadratic, uh, quadratic equations in general, there's basically four different things you could do um, to try to solve this equation. Now, an equation can always be solved, but what you want to be thinking about is uh, the following. So some quadratic equations you can um, solve by taking the square root of both sides, something as simple as x squared is equal to 4, uh, for example. But this situation, or our problem, is not that situation, so this technique is not going to work. Now, sometimes you can factor, right? Now, factoring is awesome, 
and try to factor this trinomial into two binomials equal to zero, that's excellent. So you should attempt to factor this, but if you kind of mess around with this, trying to factor, you'll see that this is uh, cannot be factored, right? So you have to be super good at factoring uh, in algebra. It's really, really important, but you can see here, um, hopefully, you know, those of you out there who are watching this video, uh, will know that, well, I cannot uh, factor this. This is not factorable, right? So unfortunately, we can't use that technique. Now, if you have any questions about factoring, uh, that's a huge uh, critical skill in algebra. I have additional YouTube videos on my uh, uh, YouTube channel, obviously, on factoring, but I would probably gear you or steer you towards out my Algebra 1 course and my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course in my math help program if you really want to kind of get into the uh, details on how to do all this stuff. But um, in this particular problem, again, we can't take the square root of both sides. We can't factor it. So what do we do? Well, we have to fall back on our best friend when it comes to quadratic equations, and that is the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula can solve all quadratic equations. Okay, So we're going to have to use this. And then we have this thing over here called completing the square, which is kind of a long way of doing the quadratic formula. You need to know how to uh, solve by completing the square. Your teacher is going to want, uh, want to see that you know how to do that. And this is very, very important in mathematics, but it's not like your first practical choice when you're solving a quadratic equation. So if you can't do this, you can't factor, well, go ahead and break out the quadratic formula, and that's how we're going to solve this uh, problem right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to uh, solve a quadratic equation using uh, the quadratic formula. Well, the first thing is you need to make sure our equation is in standard form. And of course, I already wrote it in standard form, highest to lowest power, because when it's written in highest to lowest power, the coefficients, the numbers in front of these variables and this number over here, we assign uh, variables to. So the number in front of the x squared or y squared, does, don't worry about the variable. It could be x, y, z, doesn't make a difference. But the number in front of that variable squared is a. So a is equal to 3. And then the number in front of that middle term, uh, x or y, is going to be b. So in this case, b is equal to 17. And then our constant number, just number by itself, is c. So c is equal to 5. So first things first, when you're going to use the quadratic formula, make sure your uh, equation is in standard form and then assign your a, b, and c values. Now, uh, once you've done that, you need to actually know the quadratic formula, and here it is right here. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, boy, I would just totally forget this. Well, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, um, certainly you need to have this in your notes when you're you know, uh, first learning this. But over time, this is kind of a formula that you're going to be expected to kind of put in your long-term memory, okay? So try to work on uh, memorizing this. We don't have to reference this. It's going to be really, really, uh, really, really important for those of you that continue to learn uh, algebra, more advanced algebra. We're going to be using this formula a lot. So what do we have to do here? Well, we have to replace these Bs here with 17, and then we have 4, and then we have an A right here, so we have to plug in that A value. Then we have C right here. We have to plug in that C value. And then, of course, we have that other A value down here in the denominator. So anytime you're plugging these values or any values into a formula in algebra or mathematics or in science in general, always use parentheses. So, for example, minus B, I'm going to plug in a 17 right there. Notice when I'm plugging in my 17, it's in parentheses. So always get in the habit of uh, plugging in values uh, using parentheses, so, and be very careful about this because a lot of students will make mistakes by um, plugging in the values. They'll go too quick, and then they'll actually plug in the wrong values. Okay, They'll make a mistake, and then they'll go ahead and start working on simplifying this whole thing right here, but they actually plugged in the numbers incorrectly. So take your time, double-check that, in fact, you plugged in everything correctly. So you can kind of see that's what I did here. Matter of fact, let me erase some of this stuff so some of you could see this better, okay, if you're not familiar with the quadratic um, formula. So we have minus 17 plus or minus b squared, which of course is 17 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 5, all over, of course I'm going to be taking the square root of that, all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 3. 
Okay, so now we have to go ahead and tackle all the number crunching here and feel free to use a calculator to help you out. Okay, so here we have uh, minus 17, which is going to be a negative 17 plus or minus 17 squared right here is 289. And then we have 4 times 3 times 5. And you're just looking at this, this will be 60, right? 5 times 4 is 20, 20 times 3 is 60. So that's 60. So, and then of course, 2 times 3 down here is going to be 6. So let's go ahead and uh, subtract 60 from 289. We get 229 right there. And we have minus 17 plus minus square root of 229 over 6. This would be considered a perfectly uh, fine answer. And when you're dealing with the square root of a number like this, you know, you stop and think about it and be like, hey, can I, is there any perfect squares in there? If you're fairly confident that it's prime and you can't simplify it, go in and just leave it like this. And most math teachers out there will give you full credit. So hopefully, you know, you have a pretty good uh, review of how to tackle quadratic equations. We kind of remember the big picture um, over here. And let me kind of go back to it right here. I know my work is kind of all over the place, but this is the deal when you're dealing with quadratic equations, all right? Uh, the first thing is they're always going to have two solutions, and there's always going to be a path to solve the equation, right? So you want to try to take the easiest path. If you can't take the square root of both sides, do that. But if you can't, try to factor. If you can't do that, you always fall back on the quadratic formula as which we just saw because all quadratic equations will have those two solutions. And again, putting the square is something else you're going to need to know as well. Okay, so if you need additional help with quadratic equations or algebra in general, I again, I would direct you towards my Algebra 1 course and my Math Help program. But hopefully this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.